The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. People in Taft were woken up by a tanker truck fire earlier this week. It happened just after 4 a.m. yesterday morning. You can see that tanker truck engulfed in flames. It was carrying liquid asphalt. Some spilled onto the parking lot of this hotel. People inside the hotel had to be evacuated. Fire crews say they knocked down the blaze in 30 minutes and no one was hurt. 17 News is your local election headquarters and as we count down to 2024, local races are starting to take shape. Wasco Vice Mayor Alex Garcia is entering the race for Kern County Board of Supervisors. The Wasco High School graduate has been serving on the Wasco City Council since 2016. Garcia says his campaign for the District 4 seat will focus on building a broad coalition of support from residents, community leaders and organizations throughout Kern County. The seat has been held by Supervisor David Couch since 2013. Here's a look at that district. It primarily covers areas in northwest Kern County, but also includes regions of South Bakersfield, Arvin and Lamont. To making headlines around the state this morning and a disturbing discovery near the beach in Malibu. We now know the name of the man whose body was found inside a barrel floating in the ocean. The LA County Coroner's Office identified the victim as 32 year old Javonta Murphy. According to his Instagram page, Murphy was a singer and songwriter from Los Angeles. No information about the cause or manner of death has been determined. The barrel was first spotted on Sunday, but it wasn't until Monday morning that it was brought ashore and opened by a lifeguard. Governor Gavin Newsom has appointed the first director of California's brand new oil watchdog division. Newsom announcing he selected Ty Milder for the job to lead the state division of petroleum market oversight. The new division was formed as part of Newsom's oil price gouging plan approved by state Democratic lawmakers earlier this year. Newsom says the division will monitor the oil industry and identify if price gouging is taking place, something oil industry corporations have long denied. Milder previously served as a prosecutor and antitrust expert in the U.S. Department of Justice. Last year, the state moved forward with Governor Gavin Newsom's plan to ban the sale of all new gas-powered cars in California by 2035. But now a California congressman has introduced a new bill to stop the plan in its tracks. Capitol correspondent Eitan Wallace has a closer look at the legislation and reaction. Governor Newsom has been very clear in his goal to phase out all new gas powered cars in the state within the next 12 years. But one California congressman and his Republican colleagues say not so fast. It's completely unrealistic. GOP Congressman Jay Obernalty slamming Governor Gavin Newsom's policy to ban the sale of all new gas powered cars in California by 2035. During a one on one interview with Inside California Politics co host Nikki Lorenzo, Obernalty expanded on his concerns with the plan, arguing it is impractical and unaffordable. Given that the cheapest electric cars on average are at least $30,000, he's concerned the plan could hurt everyday Californians. For government to have the arrogance to say, that this is going to be the future and we're going to force you to do it, uh, I think is just, uh, is just indefensible. So indefensible, he says, that he introduced a bill in Congress to stop Newsom's plan and those like it in other states. Specifically, his bill would block attempts to ban the sale of vehicles with internal combustion engines. The legislation would also restrict the Environmental Protection Agency from granting any waivers allowing states like California to ban the sale of new gas-powered cars. I think the overarching problem here is you're taking away consumer choice. You're telling people government knows better than you do what your choices for buying a new vehicle should be. It all comes nearly one year after the California Air Resources Board, or CARB, back to the governor's plan, a plan supporters say is necessary to combat climate change and bad air quality. In a statement, CARB Executive Officer Stephen Cliff argued the state's plan is necessary, quote, to clean the air that Californians breathe and reduce the public health impact from pollution, we need urgency and action. The governor echoing a similar sentiment. His spokesperson saying this is where the industry is already going and automakers have fully embraced California's policies. Consumers want cleaner cars. 
And from here, the bill still faces an uphill battle and needs majority approval from the House and democratically controlled Senate. And if it makes it that far, it would need the signature of Gavin Newsom ally, President Joe Biden. Reporting from Sacramento, Aton Wallace, 17 News. 17 Crime Watch this morning. A man who said he shot and killed two people because he was mad was in court yesterday, and a judge determined he is not competent to stand trial. Vicente Nico Williams is charged for two counts of first degree murder and a charge of attempted murder. This is all stemming from an incident last summer at the Vagabond Inn in South Bakersfield. According to court documents, Williams admitted to the shooting and said he did it because he was, quote, mad. Williams will be reevaluated later this month. A 12 year old boy is still in the hospital this morning with life threatening injuries after he and two other kids were hit by a car while they were riding their bikes. It happened Sunday night on Plans Road near Plans Elementary School when officers say three kids were hit by a car from behind while riding their bikes. The driver did not stop. One kid was not taken to the hospital and one had minor injuries. But the third child, identified by his family as Kiwan Shepherd, is facing is has critical injuries. His mother tells 17 News he is quote still fighting. Police say the suspect's car is described as gray, a gray Kia Optima with a damaged grill and broken windshield. And out of the fentanyl crisis, most of us are well trained on using vending machines, which normally supply things like candy or soft drinks. But there's a new vending machine on the streets dispensing life saving medication for free. 17's Robert Price paid a visit. These days, many medical facilities are not just in the treatment business, they're also in the harm reduction business. That, at least, is the case here on Baker Street at Clinica Sierra Vista. Meet Clinica Sierra Vista's new refrigerated vending machine around back of the Baker Street Clinic. Sorry, no Reese's peanut butter cups in this bad boy. Just vital supplies like safe injection kits, safe sex kits, feminine hygiene kits, sharps containers, and perhaps the most vital these days, Narcan, the opioid antidote nasal spray that, in this age of fentanyl, is a must-have for drug users and non-users alike. Clinica Programs Administrator Cecilia Scott says the vending machine, protected by this sturdy suit of armor, is on Baker Street for a reason. So we have this outside because we do want it available for um, our population 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we do have it specifically on Baker just due to the nature of where we're located. Um, we do health care for the homeless at this site. And so we do want to make these harm reduction supplies available to everybody. Clinica physician Fiona Axelson got the ball rolling last month by delivering almost 5,000 doses of Narcan in her SUV to all of Clinica's Kern County locations. She said three more harm reduction vending machines are coming in the next couple of months, including two that will be, like this one on Baker, outdoors. The coolest thing about it is that it's 100% free. Um, this is completely funded through grants, and so we're able to provide this to this neighborhood. It's also completely confidential. So when you scan the QR code, if you don't want to use your name, you don't have to use your name. Clinica isn't the only local health care organization that grasped the importance of uncomplicated Narcan availability. Omni Family Health has the opioid antidote available at the front counter of its several clinics, and Adventist Health hands it out upon request at its Chester Avenue ER. But not everyone does that. Dignity Health, including Mercy ER, requires overdose victims to check in as patients. Same with Good Samaritan in Oildale. One ER worker, reached by phone by 17 News, said, quote, We don't just hand out Narcan gladly. Then she abruptly hung up. Fortunately, many do hand it out gladly. The folks at Clinica will tell you they're not enabling. They're keeping people alive until they can get the treatment they really need. On Baker Street, Robert Price, 17 News. Making news around the nation. For the first time in U.S. history, a former president is charged with trying to overturn an election. Former President Trump is facing a new indictment for allegedly trying to defraud the United States. He's specifically alleged to have taken part in three criminal conspiracies. Mr. Trump calls the latest indictment his third fake. NBC's Drew Petromo is on Capitol Hill with details. Former President Trump indicted on four new charges for what prosecutors say were Trump's multi-pronged efforts to remain in the White House after losing the 2020 election. 
The federal indictment accuses the former president of taking part in three conspiracies to defraud the United States by trying to stop the counting and processing of votes, to obstruct official proceedings by stopping the certification of votes on January 6, 2021, and the third broad conspiracy to disenfranchise voters. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6, 2021, was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. This is special counsel Jack Smith's second indictment of Trump. He's the same prosecutor who charged Trump with federal crimes over his handling of classified documents. Attorney General Merrick Garland appointed Smith and says Smith is acting independently. Mr. Smith and his team of experienced, principled career agents and prosecutors have followed the facts and the law wherever they lead. But Trump and his defenders say the prosecution is politically motivated. Joe Biden's running against Donald Trump and losing currently. And now we have that Justice Department indicting President Trump. Trump taking to social media, writing, why didn't they bring this ridiculous case two and a half years ago? They wanted it right in the middle of my campaign. That's why. But former Vice President Mike Pence had a different take. In a statement responding to the indictment, he says, Anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. A sharp rebuke from the man who was once Trump's running mate. This is the third time Trump has been indicted, twice now by the special counsel and once by a DA in New York over Trump's payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Charges in a fourth case regarding election interference in Georgia could come this month. Drew Petromil, NBC News, Washington. And happening today, L.A. Congressman Adam Schiff will be in Bakersfield. He is one of the candidates running to secede longtime California Senator Dianne Feinstein. He'll be live in the KGET studios during our 5 p.m. newscast. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.